Let's see how we can work with CSS module specification in with projects. First of all, we're gonna import a couple of CSS files in our main script. Let's just give them arbitrary names and create these files. As with another CSS file, we're gonna place new files within assets folder. And now just to have something to work with, let's add here some CSS rules. For example, we will have heading class, which will have the following row. Color of the text will be orange. And in another CSS file, we're going to have the same CSS selector, but in this case, let's use another CSS property font size and set it to 30 pixels. And so what will happen right now when we're gonna use this heading class is that it's going to apply both of these rules to the element. So the color will become orange and font size will be 30 pixels. Let's just assign this class heading to this h1 element. And before we check it out in the browser, let's go back to main.js file and import another CSS file, 3.css. This is the file we have already created in the previous lesson. And we already know what will happen in a browser when it's gonna make requests to fetch these CSS files. Actually, Vit is going to convert every CSS import into valid ECMAScript module where all styles will be assigned to a constant with the name vitcss. And then this code will also include these styles as separate style elements inside of head element, as we can see right here. And as a result on the page, we see text with orange color. And now we're gonna go back to the editor and do the following. Let's include suffix module in every of these imports. And this is gonna be kind of a hint for Vit to treat this CSS import in a special way. So what Vit is going to do whenever it sees such import with word module, it is going to apply transformation to convert this CSS module into valid ECMAScript module. And this module as a default export will have a JavaScript object with styles. And of course we can import such objects from CSS modules and assign it to appropriate variables, for example, to style A variable and style B. And just to see exactly what we're gonna get in these variables, let's print each of those variables in a console. And in order for this to work, we should also rename appropriate CSS files and use module word in names. So let's do this rename first module for A by adding module word and also do the same with second module for B. And if we take a look what we get in a browser when we were requesting every CSS module, we see that David has applied conversion to turn CSS modules into ECMAScript module. But this time it has also converted our original class names into unique strings, as we can see. And also since we printed exported objects in the console, let's just see how these objects look. So as a key in here, we see our original class name that we have used in CSS module files. And as a value, it has corresponding converted class name, which is unique per CSS module. So on the page, we're gonna see two style elements that include both of these unique class names and every style element corresponds to one CSS module. So now we don't have to worry if we're gonna have two equal class names in more than one CSS module because generated classes will be unique. And let's see it in action. So I'm going to query element with class heading and assign to property class name class of the first CSS module. So I'm referring to the first CSS module object styles A and use class name which is stored within heading property. As we can see this key corresponds to our original class name, but the actual value which is stored under this key is unique class name. So by applying only this heading class from the first module, we're gonna get only one property applied, font size. And another property which makes text color orange which belongs to another CSS module was not actually applied because every class name is unique per CSS module. And if I would like to also apply text color, I'm gonna have to manually assign CSS class from the second module styles B in the same way by referencing heading property. So right now we see that both those CSS rules have been applied because we have manually assigned unique CSS classes to this H1 element. And as for transformations that it makes with our CSS modules, we can see that our original CSS module code gets converted into the following code where class name becomes unique with unique hash appended to class name.
and after it has applied this transformation, it is going to transform this CSS code into valid ECMAScript module. So after running this code in the browser, the styles will be added to the page. And this module also exports object, where key is our original class name and value converted unique class name. And this is how we were able to import CSS module within JavaScript file. So we have received default export into this styles a variable, which contains our original class names as keys and converted unique class names as values. And since here we use syntax of native imports of ES modules, we can just as easily use the structuring and fetch only those parts that we need. For example, we want to fetch only class that corresponds to heading. Let's use here variable heading, assign an alias, heading font size, just to avoid collision with another CSS class that we are importing in here. We can also assign unique alias heading color. And then we need to reference these new aliases when we assign these classes to heading element. And sure enough, we're gonna end up with the same result. And this is how we can work with CSS module specification in Vite projects.